Hello Kabayanatics! Kamusta kayo? Tagal kong walang content na biology na vlog. <laughs> anyway, in this video, pag-usapan natin ang recombinant DNA. Mga kabahay natin, sa video kong ito na sana makatulong part 4, pag-uusapan natin ang recombinant DNA, particularly on how insulin is made or produced using recombinant DNA technology. Pag-uusapan natin ang insulin dyan, no? Kasi ang insulin ay napakahalaga sa tao, no? pero may mga tao na yung kanilang pancreas ay hindi nagre-release ng insulin. Problema yon ng mga may type 1 diabetes. So, paano na lang kapag may diabetes sila at yung problema nila sa pancreas ay hindi nag release ng insulin. So, dito napapasok yung recombinant DNA kasi sa recombinant DNA, dyan may kakayahan itong technology na ito, yung RDNA technology para makapag-create ng insulin using the bacteria and the gene of the human. Since ang concern ng RDNA is the combination or genetic combination of two organisms kaya ng bacteria, the DNA, and the human DNA to produce an insulin. So, paano ba mangyayari yun? Papaliwanag natin yan mamaya. So, by the way, kabayan natin kung bago ka sa channel kong ito, kung naligaw ka man, thank you so much. <laughs> Kindly hit the subscribe button and the notification bell para mas maging updated ka pa sa mga suit ko pa or future na biology ng vlogs. Let's start the discussion. Before you formally proceed to the step-by-step -step procedure on how the insulin is made or produced using RDNA technology, define muna natin guys, mga kabayan natin, kung ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA, molecules of DNA from two different species are inserted into a host organism to produce new genetic combinations that are of value to science, medicine, agriculture, and industry. So, meaning to say, there are two DNAs involved. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid from a different species. Let's say, for instance, in creating the insulin, uh, ginamitan ito ng E. coli, particularly yung bacteria. Kinuha doon yung pinaka-DNA ng bacteria. At the same time, kumuha naman ng tinatawag natin na gene of interest Mamaya, papaliwanag ko yun kung ano yung sabihin nun. Kumuha ng gene of interest sa pinaka-human insulin na genome. So, pinagsama yung dalawang DNA ng E. coli at DNA ng human insulin gene to create a recombinant DNA. And later on, this recombinant DNA will produce an insulin. Paliwanag natin yan mamaya sa step-by-step -step procedure. Our DNA technology is used in genetic engineering that involves the identification isolation and insertion of gene of interest into a vector such as plasmid to form a recombinant DNA. So yun nga, nagkaroon na ng process doon at yung process na yun ay iisa-isahin natin para malaman natin kung paano ba nagawa ang insulin through recombinant DNA technology. So here are the steps in recombinant DNA technology on how to create or produce an insulin. Okay, let's proceed to number one. A small piece of circular DNA called plasmid is extracted from the bacteria or yeast. Mga kabayan natin, baka malito tayo ha. There are two DNAs na matatagpuan sa structure ng mga bacteria. Una na doon yung thread-like structure, pangalawa doon yung circular or round. So they are both DNA at the same time, pero ang kukunin lang natin doon or i-extract natin doon ay walang iba kundi si plasmid. Okay? Second, a small section then cut out of a circular plasmid by restriction enzyme. So when we already get the plasmid, yung pinaka circular or round shape niya, what we are going to do is to cut it using a restriction enzymes. So ikakat natin siya. So that's the second step. Third step, a gene from human insulin is inserted into the gap in the plasmid. The plasmid is now genetically modified. So here, it is mentioned that we are going to get a human insulin gene. Pero mga kabayan natin, hindi natin kukunin yung buong insulin gene ng human. Hindi natin kukunin yun. Kukunin lang natin yung pinaka-DNA fragment nun 
yung maliit na portion lang ang tawag natin doon ay gene of interest. Kasi hindi natin pwedeng pagsamahin ng buo yung DNA ng bacteria, yung pinaka-plasmid plus uh, DNA ng human, particularly sa gene ng insulin, hindi natin sila pagsamahin ng buo. What we are going to get in the insulin of human gene is the only fragment. So therefore, pag napagsama na natin yung plasmid or DNA ng bacteria, and then we inserted the gene of interest from human, there are already two genetic combinations galing sa human and bacteria. And we will now call it as recombinant DNA. Dahil, again, meron ng dalawang genetic combinations na pinagsama. Number four, the genetically modified plasmid is introduced to a new bacteria or yeast cell. So, inintroduce na natin yun. Number five, the cell then divides, then rapidly and starts making an insulin. So, unti-unti, nagdi-divide na siya, dumadami na siya, at unti-unti na rin nakakapag-produce ng insulin. Number six, to create large amounts of cells, the genetically modified bacteria or yeast are grown in fermentation vessels. So, ibig sabihin, kakailanganin natin ng fermentation tank or vessels for this that contain all the nutrients they need para mabuhay, para mag-divide, para mapadami yung insulin. The more cells divide, the more insulin is produced. Number seven, when fermentation is complete, the mixture is filtered to release the insulin. And last but not the least, the insulin is then purified, then packaged into the bottles and insulin pens for distribution to the patients particularly with diabetes. So mga kabarinatics, here are the 8 steps accordingly on how to produce an insulin using recombinant DNA technology. So I think masyadong malawak yon, masyadong broad yon, kasi more on text and explanations lang yung sinabi ko. Now, we will proceed on the pictures and then isa-isahin ulit natin yung steps para ma-review natin at para mas maintindihan natin. Let's go! So here is the picture of the insulin production example of genetic engineering. Nakuha ko lang to sa Google. So, all of the mentioned step-by-step -step procedure on how to create the insulin is already mentioned a while ago lang. No? So, we have 8 steps. So, dito, nandito na lahat ng steps na yon Kaya lang ipapaliwanag lang natin ng mas detalyado. Mga kabahay natin, sundan nyo ako mabuti para mas maintindihan natin. Okay, let's proceed to the starter bacterial cell. That's number one. So, as you can see, uh, yan yung pinaka-bacteria. Uh, it contains cell wall, cytoplasm, and yan yung mga organelles niya. No? May mga ribosomes din dyan. At kung makikita nyo dyan, meron dyan large chromosomal ring of DNA. So, yun yung binanggit ko kanina, thread-like structure na DNA at ring of plasmid DNA. So, na-mention, meron dalawang DNA pero again, ano nga ba yung kukunin nating DNA? Nabanggit ko kanina na ang kukunin natin ay yung pinaka-DNA ng bacterial cell. Yun yung plasmid, the round and circular. We are going to extract the plasmid. Next, number three, section of DNA cut by restriction enzyme. Kasi si restriction enzyme para siyang molecular scissors, siya yung responsible para ikat yung enzymes. Bakit ba natin kailangan ikat yung pinaka plasmid ng bakteriya? Kailangan natin ikat because we are going to insert okay, a gene from human para makabuo tayo ng recombinant DNA. Let's say for instance, the DNA section is already cut. So, ano magiging itsura? Yan. Proceed tayo sa number 5. Gene for insulin inserted into plasmid of DNA using ligase enzyme. Sige, paliwanag ko later si ligase. So, as you can see, merong pink at color green. The pink is the representation of vector, particularly yung plasmid from the bacteria, and later on, ininsertan ng kulay green na DNA. San galing yung DNA na yon? Galing yon saan? Sa gene for insulin. San galing organism? Kay human. And then, makikita na natin na meron ng combination ng pink and green that represents the recombinant DNA. The gene for insulin inserted into plasmid ring of DNA using ligase enzyme. 
Sino ba yung ligase enzyme na yan? By the way, mga kabahay natics, hindi porke kinat na natin at pinagdikit yung dalawang DNAs na yan, ay automatic magdidikit na kaagad sila, hindi ganon. There is a need to have an enzyme and we called it as ligase. Si ligase is an enzyme responsible in joining the two DNAs together. At yung proseso ng ginawa ni ligase is called as the ligation. Modified plasmids or the recombinant DNA put back into new bacterial cells. Next, bacterial cell multiply producing an insulin. Okay, pero siyempre nabanggit kanina that there is a need to have a fermentation tank or fermentation vessels para doon paramihin or doon pabilisin yung pag-divide ng mga cells at pagdami ng mga insulin. Sa number 8, the insulin is extracted from the bacteria. Kung mapapansin nyo yung mga tuldok-tuldok, yung mga bilog-bilog na yun, yun yung mga insulin. Okay, yun yung i-extract natin para ilagay sa bottle and prepared for the patient. Particularly sa mga taong may diabetes. So in overall presentation of this picture, I hope the process of our DNA technology using or on how to create an insulin ay naintindihan nyo. Ito na nga, natapos na natin ng short at uh, siguro makabuluhang discussion about sa recombinant DNA. At sana nakatulong ako sa inyo, nakapagbigay ako sa inyo information tungkol sa recombinant DNA technology na ito. Particularly, again, on how to create an insulin. At napakahalaga ng discovery nito sa siyensya, particularly sa medicine, para sa mga tao na may type 1 diabetes. Kasi talaga hindi sila nakakapag-produce ng insulin. That's all for today, mga kabayan natin. And I hope, again, you learned something today at sa mga sunti pang vlogs. Thank you so much. God bless you all.